Jack Leckers and residents treated for injuries were still hospitalized. The immediate crisis was over. The painful post-mortem had just begun. For more on the story tonight, let's go live now to Tim Ryan, who is still at the scene. Tim? And Joel, in the distance, faint lights, work lights, continue to burn tonight as that search for at least two more bodies continues. Two more people who are listed as missing, people who had been working inside the plant at the time of the explosion. The fire trucks and the flashing lights may be gone, but this story is far from over. Tonight we had the chance to talk to people who live in this area. One man, for example, told me he used to work inside that refinery, and that was a kind of nightmare that he always worried about. So the flames may have been put out, but the memory, the impact of what happened lingers. All day and night, people have been driving by, stopping to take a look at the ruined refinery. Some of them work here or have worked in the oil business. You can expect the unexpected any time. I didn't think about it at all when I worked at Texaco. You don't think about that thing. All you think about is, you know, bringing the money home, you know. And uh, it's just... It's beyond my comprehension that something like this could happen. As the fire was controlled and the confusion died down today, the death count climbed. A refrigerated truck had to be brought into Joliet, a temporary morgue for the dead. 700 people work at this plant. It is not known what is going to happen to their jobs now that much of this huge refinery is in ruins. This man was helping clean up today. It just melts and warps the metal it's so hot that this it's just hard to explain it. This melts the metal, this twists it and rolls it. It's just a real mess. Workers have already started clearing away the wreckage even before it is known what caused this tragedy. That task made even more difficult, if not impossible, by the destruction. A disaster like this is not forgotten for a long time. People are going to be talking about it for years to come. Jim Gibbons has one story. Last night's explosion will be remembered first as a tragedy that has taken lives and caused serious injuries. The physical damage, the concussion felt by so many, and the incredible fire that burned so high and so long may also be remembered. But there are, of course, hundreds of personal stories that have changed people's lives. Rick Rimbo is home with his family tonight, but he considers that a miracle. While helping others who were trapped in burning debris, there was a second explosion. It's like all hell broke loose would be the best way to, let, to describe it. I just ended up flying through the air and ended up in the A&M Canal. I can remember leaving my feet. And I just felt like somebody just picked me up and threw me. I don't understand why I wasn't uh, one of the casualties, and I imagine there's about 10 or 15 other people that are saying the same thing. And consider the story of the Pavliks who live in a hill not far from this refinery. They have seen other explosions and fires in their neighborhood, but they have always called this home. Last night may have changed that. She was blown from the kitchen in the other room, and I see blood all over the floor. It was a, 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 like a tornado or an earthquake. It was some kind of thing that I didn't know what was happening until the glass started hitting me. As far as rebuilding, I'm not, uh, I don't feel like I want to rebuild. Jim Gibbons, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. And as we said, this story is far from over, about a mile behind us. The search continues, even at this hour, for two more bodies suspected to be inside the rubble of that refinery. Live in Romeoville, Tim Ryan, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Tim. Good job. In other news this evening.